What is up, folks? How we doing? It's another Dark and Darker update, and this one, while a very small update in length, I can assure you is going to mean huge things moving forward. This is a big precursor to Iron Mace's plans to absolutely, I think, just obliterate the game you know, and like, things, things are changing. So, let's do a little bit of a recap on the recent updates to just kind of like get us into this. I'm gonna scroll up here just for a second um, while we talk about the last update that added the level 15 Q. Now, everyone's got a hot take about this. I especially have a hot take about this. I hate it. <laughs> As a long-standing player who is playing Ranger solo a lot, which is one of the weakest solo classes, um, this Q has been horrible for me. Um, I've had a no good, very bad time. Now, my gripes aside, I think it is a to use a very big fancy word, a microcosm of a lot of bigger issues with Dark and Darker and how it's been played recently. So I wanna talk about a couple things in this video that stem from these changes and essentially things that Iron Mace is doing to basically take on those things. So let's talk about the update. Couple things that are big here. Obviously the changes, you're seeing both high roller queues getting reduced in number of players for one, and the gold entrance fee is getting increased. Now, Iron Mace is saying this is a big data collection phase, essentially. Um, they're looking to see, hey, like, what does this do for the game? Um, so we're gonna see what it does for the game. But right off the gate, as someone who was playing High Roller occasionally, and again, uh, in the Goblin Caves, so I can't tell you much about the Howling Crypt personally, I've watched stuff, but I'll tell you right now, um, the big problem was that it was everyone bringing their best gear paying 50 gold uh and we're talking hundreds of gold in gear by the way so you know you it a lot like tarkov playing labs you gear up you've made all this money and then you dunk like 1.5 million into a set and then you go in with your 150k labs key card and then you die uh the amount of labs you'd actually have to survive and in this case let's take away from the metaphor the amount of goblin caves high roller you'd have to survive to actually like make that set worth it uh, is kind of wild. So you see a lot of default rogues, um, and rogue is like the premium class. Look at the leaderboard, you can see that rogue is everywhere on the Goblin Cave leaderboards. Uh, shout out Mojito Beans again. Just It's just his videos, just shout out Mojito Beans. Um, plays it like he should, for the record. Anyway, um, but lots of like default rogues in the high roller queue, um, and that's no good, man. That's not good for business. Um, so, couple things changing. People are gonna have to pay more gold, which might actually increase the number of default rogues, but here's the kicker. There are three less players per match, and I think what we're seeing in the high roller queue and in the 15 plus queue, especially for Goblin Caves, again, can't speak to Howling Crypt, but I think it's the same. Players are getting much more savage and kill hungry, and it's not because they want to kill people, it's because they have to. Um, in High Roller Goblin Caves, there's four people that get out, I believe. Five if you include the um, the the manual extract. Uh, the There's, you know, very much like normal Goblin Caves, there's a portcullis that raises at a certain point in the match, and then you can just walk right on out. Um, guaranteed extract, whatever you want to call it. Um, staircase, a lot of people call it, because they're both staircases. Anyway, point is, you're seeing five of those nine people afforded the opportunity to get out. Now, that's, of course, assuming they can find those portals. Um, Iron Mace has been very, very, honestly, very transparent about, like, kind of where they want the survival rates. You can see it as they've changed the amount of people in the Goblin Caves over the last few playtests. Um, you can see it in changes they're making to the game. They have all this data. They've given us all this data in the past. They have an idea of where they want their survival rate, and I guarantee you that survival rate was absolutely tanking in High Roller and the 15 plus Q. Now we haven't seen a change to the 15 plus Q here. I think we will, but that's to come. High Roller getting changed though is a big step in the right direction. They have not changed the amount of portals that spawn. So these six players that are getting into High Roller, look, you're already sinking money. You're already paying 50 gold to get into this lobby. The survival rate ought to be higher, especially given that you're going to be going up against tougher competition. There should be reward to going into these lobbies. At the end of the day, a relatively skilled player, someone who's surviving more than 50% of the time, uh, ought to be making money. That's, I think, anyway, where the game potentially should be. 
Um, now, if it's not there, you need to see Goblin Caves basically making you way more money. Like, th there has to be a point where you can play the game and just keep playing, right? You have to be able to have your average player continually, you know, being able to make money consistently. Um, for low roller, for the normal queue, that makes sense. You have, like, you know, you can go in there with your default kit and come out fairly regularly with 100 plus gold and treasures if you get some good looting paths. Um, that's not crazy, and you're going from a zero gold investment, literally no risk at all. If you want to, like, buy yourself a weapon, you're maybe going in with, like, 15 gold. Um, and you're ma you're coming out with a lot. So, again, that ratio, I think Iron Mace is messing with right now. And the fact that we're going from... Howling Crypt High Roller Change is big. We're going from tw 18 to 12. That's two teams that are suddenly no longer a part of that queue not only does it make it way more possible to survive for the normies and again i want to stress something while we're talking about this watching streamers is not a they are not the people to balance the game around um guys like repose and his team and like all these you know these like chad high roller teams um while they are very much a part of the ecosystem it's important to keep them in balance, but the important thing is to make it so that High Roller is actually viable across the entire game ecosystem. So having said that, you're gonna see, I think the survival rate on these queues go up a little bit, but not a lot, because again, the player base's mentality has changed quite a bit. And that's the big thing I wanna talk about in this video. This game is very much being taken way more seriously than it was early on. And it's very interesting to see. In solo Goblin Caves in the 15 plus queue, um, I used to, in the normal queue, I used to regularly run into people who were like, I'm good, I don't wanna fight, like we're fine. Um, you know, we both know we're probably getting out alive or we both are like, I don't wanna take the risk of like fighting. You know, you, you look across the room and you go, not a great matchup for me. You do the friendly crouch, they do it back to you. You're like, all right, great. And you kind of just accept the fact that you and that person, you think you're gonna get out. I don't see that anymore at all all and whether it's the opinion of ranger that has changed i know if i see a rogue i'm never i just don't trust them anymore um but the player base is evolving and changing and the player's mentality is the toughest thing to update and balance and it is the thing that is currently at least for me making some of the games i'm playing really really unfun now i want to give a quick shout out um, to, and I'll, you know what, he's live right now, but he's not in a dungeon, so I'm not gonna, like, pull up his footage just now, but I want to shout out you toast you. um, it's actually not you toast you, it's just you toast. excuse me, um, he is the top-ranked ranger in High Roller, uh, and this is more of a personal gripe, but I just want to mention it, if you watch his gameplay, what is required for a ranger to be successful in the High Roller Goblin Caves, uh, whew, boy, oh boy, it's not a solo class, it's up there and maybe very possibly the weakest class in high roller so listen I've, I've got my work cut out for me when i go into the high roller queue but i just want to stress those of you who think ranger is overpowered go watch how he has to play in that queue uh and especially how he has to play around rogues it's honestly fascinating it's a lot of stuff that i have been slowly realizing he's on top of it as he should be given that he's a top 10 player on the leaderboard you basically if there is even a thought that there might be a rogue in the next room and he uses all sorts of cues whether it's like seeing that there are mobs that are dead just knowing the map as well as he does knowing the camping spots he cannot literally cannot push forward and that adds up with everything i've been encountering as a solo ranger rogues have your number man if you don't see them first when you have to walk into that room that you have no idea what's on the other side and they can hear you walking and they're just sitting waiting for you i get one shot by a well-geared rogue with close to 100 health they do a lot of damage with weak point don't get it twisted <laughs> it's fucking crazy um so yeah so keep that in mind uh when you're uh saying that rangers need to be nerfed this is a bit of a personal rant i apologize but it is hilarious to me that so many people are like nerf ranger um and i get that in high roller when he has his like in in the trio queue excuse me when you've got like these other supporting cast members to give the ranger space and let him just kind of do his thing from far away a strong class but if you watch a solo ranger play you will very quickly forget about how overpowered you feel they are in the trio queue when you realize how terrible life is in the solo queue i just want to throw that out there now 
more on the mentality of players uh, in these recent patches. Again, bloodthirsty, savage, whatever you want to like, whatever label you want to put on it. Players are just way more kill hungry and more willing to kill people to ensure that they will survive. So you're seeing the play style of like the rat play style, essentially, um, for us not as skilled players out here who are attempting to survive. You're seeing that way, way less impactful and it's not as good. Most of my escapes in High Roller and in normal Goblin Caves are coming from when I can just tank the circle and go out the portcullis, go out the staircase. Um, that's, you know, that's both, uh, I guess, a, a condemnation of how good I am at PvP these days, but also a really good kind of indication of, hey, like, this is what it takes for me to get out of those raids. Um, it's bad. So uh, here's another real quick anecdote to kind of hammer my point home. You're seeing less friendly interactions, which a lot of people will consider a good thing, and I totally understand that. Um, but those friendly interactions fostered a survival rate that Iron Mace was happy with. This change that we're seeing, definitely kind of flipping in the other direction. Um, so, interesting. Anyway, I'm killing the Cave Troll, as I like to do. I can buy a Grey Spear on Ranger and kill the Cave Troll in pretty decent time. It's not anything crazy, but... It's not bad for investing like 30 gold. So I get the gray spear. I oftentimes will buy a crossbow with it. That's been my go-to setup for this wipe. Uh, and I get in there. I kill the cave troll. As soon as I killed the cave troll, both side doors opened and I was teamed up on by a warlock and a fighter. To my credit, I managed to kill the fighter. Pretty shining moment for me. But it's a 2v1. If I had gotten out of that, I'm, I'm just the greatest, honestly. Warlock kills me. He scoops in, steals all the loot. Now listen, I'm all about that mechanic. Someone is obviously going to come in and try to kill you after you kill the troll. You're lucky if it doesn't happen nowadays, right? Long gone are the days where I would go to the kill the cave troll, six people would die to NPCs and I could just walk out scot-free. Um, that's gone, right? So you have to fight your way out. But to have two guys, and this was, I gotta be, I gotta be honest, this was after multiple deaths to sometimes the same people killing me just absolutely tilted off my mind. And I had two guys seemingly teamed up. And here's the worst part. I don't actually think they were teamed up. They just both were like, we got to kill this guy that killed the cave troll, came in, roasted me, and then got out with all the loot. <laughs> that sort of thing did not happen in the past. And if it did, it was a very rare occasion. Now you're seeing cave troll kills especially getting contested heavily you're seeing high you know good loot spots getting contested heavily there is a lot more bloodthirsty play coming out in dark and darker especially in the solo queues and i think starting with high roller iron mace is taking this on immediately and they're they're saying look players are fighting each other more how can we change it so that our survival rate is about where we want it but also players are still getting the amount of loot out that we feel is necessary so this is a big tester we're 13 minutes into the video of me just rambling and i want to get to the most important thing the next update and this is the big thing i'll probably have to timestamp this somewhere because like this is the most important part of this update the next large update is going to be early access patch one we've been hot fixing up to this point this is the first actual patch they're calling it this is like the first big patch and i want to be clear iron mace is saying this is the next large update this is going to be filled filled with balance changes i would bet you bard and warlock are going to look completely different after this those are my those are my like early simple predictions um and i would not be surprised if our blessed 1 to 15 q got a change in some regard whether that's changing the trading to be different uh whether like there's a lot of moving parts going on right now and much like any balance change to rogue because rogue has so many unique abilities you touch one it drastically affects the class with trading and this 1 to 15 q which by the way i don't want to gloss over has been a re like resounding success in a lot of ways the fact that players are basically creating new characters to go into those queues, uh, not a good sign because you should want to progress. Progression should be encouraged, generally speaking. Um, but generally, <laughs> generally, the 1 to 15 queue has been a big success. And I think Iron Mace, especially from a 
player standpoint, has heard that players like the queue, but they do need to take a look at it and realize that, hmm, it's not quite working with the ecosystem of the entire game just yet. Um, and trade is a big part of that. Iron Mace says trade is a core part of the game. We've heard plenty of devs say that they think things are core parts of the game. We'll see if they stick to it. It'll be really interesting moving forward. Anyway, I'm incredibly excited. I don't want this video to go on too long. If you want to talk to me more about this, I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings. Please sound off in the comments. Join my Discord. Feel free to sound off in there. You can get links to that on my Twitch. Um, this is like, this is exciting. And for someone who has been having, honestly, like this game has been really, really, really fun. Loving this game. There's a reason I'm making so many videos about changes and stuff um, about the game. This last little bit, this last patch, however long it's been since the 14th, I've not been having a great time, has to be said. So interesting to see these high roller changes. I know for a fact I'm going to be just grinding gold to get my ass back in high roller. Um, and to my own credit, I've got some I've got some improving to do. I think I've lost my touch a little bit. So here's hoping I can uh, get back in the winner's seat <laughs> or whatever the fuck the expression is. I'll demonetize. I don't monetize these videos. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have thoughts, feelings, concerns about the patches moving forward, I kind of glossed over the big uh, the big headline here. We're getting the first official patch. We've been hot fixing, hot fixing, hot fixing. We're actually getting a patch. Now, the other thing, there will be a QA soon on the official Dark and Darker Discord. There's a channel dedicated to these Q and A's. If you want to participate, they're going to announce it very, very soon, they're saying. So keep in touch with that. That will be uh, very interesting to hear from the devs. And again, they've been really transparent about their vision and what they're trying to accomplish. So I think some good questions uh, deserve to be asked. And I think we're going to get some good answers. So before this video becomes a 20 minute nightmare, thank you so much for watching and hanging out. I know the on-screen content was probably not the most enthralling, uh, but hopefully you put this on in the background and just listen to me ramble. And uh, hopefully it was somewhat coherent at some points. Anyway, good to see Iron Mace is tweaking High Roller. I think this was the first thing that they needed to take a look at given how player mentality has changed. And that's the other highlight of this video that I want you to take away. Player mentality has taken a big, big step. Big, big step. There's a very big difference between games at their very earliest and games as they mature and the player base matures. RuneScape is a great example. I hate to go back to it, but if you look at how fast people are able to level now compared to where they were leveling in the early 2000s, it's a completely different ballgame. Knowledgeable players make for a different game. You have to, have to, have to design your game around your player's average knowledge and right now, and their mentality, and right now, Dark and Darker's in a weird spot where suddenly I think we're, we're starting to tip over that point where the player base is starting to make the game a little unfun for each other because we're starting to figure out the game's little bits and bobs a little bit too much, and it's causing us to change how we play. But we'll see moving forward how that goes. Thank you so much for watching. I am so excited for this early access patch. Um, again, I think Bard and Warlock are going to see absolutely massive changes. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll even see a sneak peek at the Druid. We'll see. Should be interesting, should be exciting. Thank you so much for watching. Before I keep rambling, I'll see you next time, guys.